Oh. Well, hello, Fernando. We already started, so we turn you off if you don't mind. Uh, good evening. Bienvenido, señoras y señores pasajeros. This is all I can say in Spanish. Uh, let me start uh, the Dio Humilia tasting with Esther. Hello, Esther. Hello. And Carolina Martinez. Hello, Carolina. Hello, everyone. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, putting long story short, uh, if you remember the, the movie Spies Like Us from the 80s, there was a scene with doctor, 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 and doctor. And here today we have Monastro, 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 and Monastro, and also Blend. Yeah, that's the difference. So, guys, 13 wines, and let's start. Well, uh, ladies, do you want to say something? Sorry, I, I, I took the voice and... Uh, <laughs> yes, we want to thank you everyone for attending this seminar on Humilla Wines, on Humilla PDO, and I hope you enjoy. And any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask through the chat, or and we will be happy to answer them. And of course, our wineries too. So uh, let's enjoy the seminar. Let's start then. Right? Caroline, Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so welcome to Humilla Wine Region uh, from the wines from the heart of Mediterranean Spain. Please. Um, our region is located southeast of Spain. Uh, it's uh, uh, formed by seven towns that you can see here in the map. Um, we are located 60 kilometers away from the Mediterranean Sea, which is enough distance to give us very peculiar um, climate and terroir. So let me please uh, show you a short overview of our region and the character, our characteristics. And, um, and then we will give floor to the wineries and their delightful wines. So we will talk very shortly about the long history and tradition of Humilla and their wines. And then we will give a short overview of the terroir, their landscape, the human factor, and of course, our monastrel. So um, Humilla uh, has been linked to grapes and wine for, for millennia. Um, there's been discoveries of archaeological, archaeological remains that date back from 3,000 years before Christ, um, where Vitis vinifera grape seeds were discovered. Uh, so this gives us the idea that uh, wine and grapes have been going on in this area for over 5,000 years now. Um, then the different civilizations that have uh, lived in this area um, from uh, Phoenicians to the Romans, um, increased the importance of wine and grapes in our region. And here you can see our uh, beautiful golden earrings that were found in an archaeological site very close to where we are now in, in here in Humilla, uh, with this uh, little grape seeds uh, engraved. Um, then for um, different uh, reasons, uh, Humilla uh, was uh, going through different changes until the late um, 19th century when the Phylloxera plague, as you all know, devastated the European vineyard and, well, uh, producers needed to seek new areas to find wines and to be able to sell those wines and export those wines and that's when humilla wine making in really bloomed in in our region um the phylloxera plague didn't really affect our area thanks to our amazing conditions that we have here especially our very sandy calcareous soils that uh prevented this horrible plague to propagate along the, the area. So uh, somehow Humilla 
um, was like an oasis, uh, the early 20th century for European wines. And um, as I said, um, this uh, made the industry of winemaking really bloom and really expand. And uh, then in 1966, over, uh, almost 60 years ago, uh, Humilla was awarded the protected designation of origin and the regulatory council, <clears throat> which I represent, was created. So we are a very old uh, protected designation of origin, one of the oldest in, in Spain. But as I said, um, the history of wine in Humilla dates back from uh, over 5,000 years ago. Uh, then in the past 25 uh, years, uh, the industry in Humilla changed from bulk wine industry into really quality bottled wines uh, that are the ones that we're going to taste today. A high quality wines made with a lot of care, a lot of, um, of uh, um, quality certification. And um, that's thanks to our amazing uh, conditions that we have here, please, that we're going to show you. Um, I want to explain very shortly how the terroir in Humilla uh, produces this amazing wines that we're going to taste afterwards. Uh, first of all, we have a very distinct climate in our area, uh, very different from the warm and um, uh, uh, um, warm Mediterranean coast that, as, as I said, it's located 60 kilometers away from our region. And uh, we uh, have a very um, clear, arid, continental uh, climate with some influence of the Mediterranean Sea. We have extreme temperatures with very low temperatures in the winter, uh, common uh, snowfalls in the month of uh, January. And then the summer are, the summers are really hot with uh, temperatures going up for up uh, 40 degrees in the months of uh, July and August. Temperatures together with our very uh, scarce rainfall uh, make this arid, uh, semi-arid continental climate, as I said. Um, and altogether, uh, something that really helps our vines um, grow so healthy is the uh the high amount of hours of sunshine per year that we have over 3000 hours of sunshine so we can we're proud to say that we are the wines of the sun um then apart from climate we have of course uh when we talk about terroir we talk about soils please um our soils are of course uh you have uh you have a lot of variability in our soils in altitude. It depends on where the vineyard is located, but we can say that uh, most of our soils are for limestone material. Our mountains that surround the area are uh, calcareous origin, uh, which help uh, form this stony limey crust on the, on the surface of the vineyards that um, are really um, good for water retention and for uh, these droughts that we suffer in the, in the summer where the water uh, from the winter and the spring uh, rainfalls is stored and the vines can survive these hot temperatures that we have in the, in the summer. Uh, we have also a lot of sandy consistency and good drainage and airing which uh, help, uh, as I said, this water retention very well. Um, thanks to these uh, conditions of soils, we have a lot of ungrafted vines, sorry, what we call in Spanish pie franco. Uh, these are vines that have not been grafted with the American root, so they are the true vitis vinifera vines that still survive today and that uh, some of the wines that we're going to try 
are made from these amazing vines that still uh, survive in our area. Please. Here you can see this old bush vine uh, that I that I was explaining with the stony lime limey stony sorry limestone crust on the surface. Please. So um, apart from climate and soils, of course, we have the vines. We have over 22,000 hectares of vines in Jumilla. Many of them are certified organic. Um, they are normally planted in this uh, style that we see here, this uh, bush vine formation. Uh, we have some trellised vines for some varieties, but over 75% of the landscape we find in Jumilla is this type of uh, beautiful uh, small trees that I like to, to call. Um, yields are very low. Uh, this, as you can see in this picture, the density of plantation is quite, uh, quite small. The vines are, are quite separated from each other, so they don't compete for water and they can store as much water as possible for the drought recent, uh, season. And uh, also because of this scarce rainfall that we have here, uh, yields are, as I said, are really low, which help um, obtain amazing fruits of very concentrated uh, in aromas in different um, compounds like polyphenols and so on. And uh, which help, of course, make this very high quality wines that we are going to taste in some minutes. Uh, as I said, the natural conditions for the vines are perfect for organic farming, and we have a very high percentage of the vineyards certified as organic. And those what, which are not already certified, are many of them are in in the process of being certified organic by the different certification bodies. Uh, please. So this terroir makes uh, the perfect combination for the landscape, the natural landscape that we find in Jumilla and the traditional uh, agriculture we find in our region. Uh, as I said, we're close to the Mediterranean and, uh, but uh, we're not this uh, coastal um, landscape. We have a very distinct Mediterranean landscape that is a mix of this Mediterranean coast and La Mancha Plateau. We're in the middle of these two big regions. So we're, uh, what, what we find here are very wide valleys uh, with no um, permanent water courses. We don't have rivers uh, that cross this, this region. So um, normally we find our, these valleys surrounded by very high mount mountains that can go almost to uh, 1,400 meters high, uh, which is very high altitude to, given the fact that we're so close to the, to the sea. Um, so we are located as in a high plateau uh, where um, we can say that our vines are on 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 the range of the 500 and 900 meters above the sea level. Uh, around our vines, we can find, uh, of course, the typical uh, Mediterranean landscape, natural landscape of um, pine trees, rosemary, different Mediterranean bushes like thyme, like oregano, like sparta grass, and of course, some other Mediterranean um, agricultural crops such as uh, olive groves, almond trees, and some fruit groves as well. Please. Um, this is a picture of a very high uh, altitude vineyard, as you can see by the, by the windmills at the, at the back. Uh, this vineyard can be as high as 900 meters above level. And uh, this is a very nice picture I like to show um, about that really uh, shows the amazing landscape that we have in Jumilla with our Mediterranean crops, our Mediterranean plants, 
and are very distinct mountains surrounding the crops. <clears throat> uh, as you can see, and this is a valley, a uh, vineyard located in a valley surrounded by our mountain ranges. I don't want to forget, of course, about the human factor, which is just uh, the other uh, uh, important part for this Girard we have in Jumilla. We have over 1,600 uh, vine growers. Uh, the, then we have 40 wineries that work together with these growers and they have also their own vineyards. They combine tradition and innovation. Um, then we have the regulatory council, which I represent and stir, uh, which is in charge of promotion, like we are doing in the seminar, but very important as well. Uh, we're the control body that certifies the origin and the quality of the vines and the wines that you're going to taste today. Our commitment is to ensure uh, the highest quality for consumers and that growers and wineries uh, comply with our regulations and our specifications. We want to be different from different from other uh, wine regions in Spain. And I think we are uh, clearly a very differentiated uh, area wine region in Spain because of our climate, of our soils, of our people, and of course, uh, thanks to our wines. Um, very distinct uh, thing about Jumilla is, of course, Monastrel. Monastrel is our very indigenous grape. Uh, the majority of the Monastrel in the world is located here in Jumilla, so we can, we're proud to say that Jumilla is the kingdom of the Monastrel. Um, it's, of course, our, the majority of the vines in Jumilla is Monastrel, but we also have other grapes. Um, but the wines we're going to taste today are mostly Monastrel based or some blends uh, with Monastrel. Monastrel, as you might know, maybe uh, as Murbedre, which is the French name. Uh, funny, because Murbedre actually comes from the name Murviedro, which is the old name of a port, look, uh, a port, uh, a seaport uh, very close to Jumilla. Um, it's the precious treasure we have here in our region. It's, uh, it covers over 75% of the vineyard. It's the best adapted variety in the region. It's very rustic. It copes very well with our rain uh, our scarce rainfall with droughts. Uh, it's a long cycle variety that um, ripes, uh, ripens at the end of October. So it's a very, uh, it takes long to, to be good, to be ripe, to be uh, ready for harvest. And the product we obtain, the wines we obtain are wines with a very distinct personality, with very, uh, um, nice aromas, very sweet tannins, um, very drinkable wines, and of course they have a very nice um, aging potential, as you, we will now see with some of the wines that we are going to taste that are <clears throat> some years old. Um, as I said, apart from Monastrel, we have other uh, varieties uh, that can be grown in a region. According to our specifications, we have other reds, other red varieties such as uh, Tempranillo, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Garnacha Tintorera, which is also known as Alicante Bouchet, Garnacha, Merlot, and Petit Verdot. And then we have the whites. The whites are mainly Airen, Macabeo, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Moscatel, Pedro Ximenez, Verdejo, and Malvasia. Um, the majority of the wines of the wines we make in Jumilla are red wines. Um, over 96% of the wines are red, but uh, we have also a very growing demand for our very nice rosés and very distinct whites also. Um, also, we have a very... Um, um, 
sweet wines, dessert wines that are called as well in English, that are so nicely, uh, that work so nicely with uh, food pairings and that I invite you all to try out some someday. Um, as I said, also we are a region um, proudly certified as organic. Uh, we have the perfect conditions in Jumilla to make uh, organic wines. <clears throat> organic farming here is quite easy thanks to our semi-arid climate, the very um, constant winds that clean the plants. Um, we don't irrigate as uh, much. Some varieties need irrigation, but mostly of the vines are not irrigated. And um, we are a pioneer in Spain for this organic farming and organic wines. Uh, our, our vineyards are sustainable. We are really low in inputs, uh, just sun, animal manure, no irrigation, as I said, and no chemicals are put into the uh, vineyard. So this makes for the healthy environment that we enjoy and uh, the flora and fauna around really, uh, I think they're really thankful for this healthy environment we provide for them. Um, as I said, the, sorry, can you go, uh, can you pass the slide? These are the wine types that we have in Jumilla, as I said before, and our markets, our markets, uh, please, next. Our markets are really export oriented. 30% uh, uh, is dedicated for the Spanish market, but over 70% is dedicated for exports. Our wines travel for around the globe. Uh, they are present in over 90 countries in the world. Uh, 2021 was a year with record sales after the, 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 the blow that meant the COVID meant for all of us, uh, the wineries were happy to, to uh, show these record sales of over 30 million bottles, which were mainly um, exported, as I said, and our main markets are very high quality markets, such as USA, Germany, UK, Canada, of course, China in third place, and uh, Poland. Poland is a very important market for Humilla wines. Uh, in it, it's now in seventh position as main market. And the last year, 2021, we exported over almost, sorry, one million bottles to your country. And I hope that this figure grows in the future. And I hope this seminar and the tasting you're going to do now uh, help, helps uh, grow these numbers and, and well, of course, uh, apart from the wines, we have an amazing uh, gastronomy here in Humilla. Uh, we, we form the Humilla wine route that is uh, over 50 years old. And this is an association of uh, wineries and different restaurants and hotels that offer the opportunity to travel and discover our amazing gastronomy and wines and the culture, the nature and the traditions of Jumilla. So I invite you all to come to Jumilla if you, if you can someday and enjoy this amazing wines and food that we have in our region. And I don't want to extend my, uh, much more. I want to give floor to the wineries, which are the true um, well, the two actors of our region and their wines, and I hope the wines speak for themselves, but the wineries will also, the representatives from the wineries will uh, guide you a little bit about uh, around the, the area. So any questions, please feel free. Well, uh, thank you very much, Carolina. Uh, let me just uh, remind you, oh, uh, Carolina is a general secretary of uh, Dio Humilia, and uh, actually, yes, two questions. One coming in okay. chat. Yes. Do you see climate change impact uh, in uh, your region and how are wineries responding if you see this climate? Yes, yes. I will quickly respond to this question. Thank you. Um, of course, of course, we see the impact of climate change in our region as everyone, everyone in the world is seeing. Um, 
here we are very close to to the desert, as I might say. So in a way, humilla and their vines and their roots and this is small uh, trees that I showed you before in the pictures, they somehow act as a barrier against the, the certification. Their roots uh, help um, prevent erosion in our area and um, the, the, um, the very low inputs that we use in our region are something somehow a good uh, weapon against climate change. Um, regarding temperatures, we are seeing that uh, harvests are each year starting earlier. Um, somehow, rainfall uh, is not so it's not more scarce than it used to be. Uh, the last years have been quite wet years, humid years, uh, in a statistical terms. Um, but yes, wineries and growers are already. Uh, making um, an effort to to well to fight this climate change impact that we are seeing um, in terms of um, the management of the vines and the very close um, look at harvest times um, and also in the winery in the cellars uh, they're also being uh, more caref careful than ever so as not to obtain um, more alcoholic wines than desired and to try to achieve the, the acidity that is needed to make the perfect balance uh, for the wines. Um, and also uh, Monastrel, I would like to add, uh, being an indigenous variety and the majority of the vines are Monastrel, um, is the best adapted variety without comparison uh, to fight ca climate change. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, another question is coming from me. As uh, uh, you were saying, Poland is number seven and it's about one million bottles, right? We, yes, 2021 uh, was the, is the last year we have statistics for, of course, when we're not over 2021, 20, 22, sorry. So yes, uh, we're almost on the, on the bridge of 1 million bottles for Poland. Right. So uh, Lithuania is number six and there is only 2.8 million Lithuanians. So how much do they buy? Uh, well, I think, Luth Lith well, I think, no, we, we're pretty sure that Lith Lithuania is a, a country that really acts as a, as a, Trader. as a hub, exactly, for uh, the Russian, the Russian market, the Scandinavian market, and other mm. Northern European countries. I see. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Carolina. Let's uh, speed up as, uh, as this is, uh, this is, you know, this is possible they drink uh, more than 1 million bottles of media wines in Lithuania. They are good. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. You're, you're, you're capable. Yeah. Good uh, Right, so, and now, uh, David, David Farage, thank you very much, Carolina, and David Farage and Bodegas Carcero, and we start the tasting, guys. David, are you with us? I hope you are. If you are, press the buttons, please. Yes, you may. Hello. Hello, David. Hello, everyone. How are you? Very well, and you? Okay, so I turn off and go on. Okay, so uh, I'm David Frage. Uh, I'm part of the family of Bodegas Carcello, and I have the honor to start this uh, this tastings of the Humilla wines, where you will taste a lot of uh, different styles of this treasure that you we have uh, as the monastery grape is. So the first one is the well, uh, the Bodegas Carcello is a family winery. It was founded in 1990. So 19, sorry, 1990. So, uh, so it's a long, it's a long, uh, it's a long time from from then. And now we are focused from the beginning uh, on elaborating quality wines uh, in bottle quality wines. Uh, we elaborate uh, wines from the, of course, this uh, our queen of Humilla, of Monastrel. And today, 
we are going to present uh, a rosé. I think this is the only rosé that we, we are going here in the, this picture. We can see what Carolina also explained. Uh, our treasure is this, this called carousels. These are booze wines of Monastuel old vines and this uh, hand harvest. Uh, so everything is super natural, very organic. Uh, I think everyone is now focusing on the organic uh, agriculture. So and that's that's the uh, the future that, that that we are going to we are going to face in the next years. Uh, so I don't know if we have more slides. Or if I can start to speak about the wine, sorry. Yeah, well, some also some images of our uh, barracks uh, room. This is Jesus, one part of the team of the cartello. Is the I like to say that is the man who whispers to the to the barracks. It's I always say to him that is a, he has the best job of the winery every, every all the time surrounding the wine uh next slide please yeah and now the, there is the the wine cartello cartello rosé uh well uh what to say it's a rosé wine as i say as he said i think that it's the only rosé that we are going to taste today and it's of course uh, elaborated with monastrel dry farming uh, booze wines, uh, minimum age of 30 years in the, in uh, this kind of limestone, limestone soils that give us uh, this minerality touches uh, hints. Uh, well, what how we how we manage to elaborate this wine? Uh, we we hunt, uh, we harvest the monastrel, and then we we uh, we this is a rosé de Sagné or breeding breeding rosé. So what we use to this this wine for me is the best part of the must of of these uh, of these uh, grapes. So it's a low fermentation, low fermentation temperature wine. It takes a long time to to end the fermentation, and then we we keep the wine for a, for a while, for a couple of months, uh, with the fine list to add a new layers of uh, complexity. It has a thirteen point five degrees. It's not a light rosé. Is a traditional style in our region, so you can see it's a darker color. Uh, it it uh, it has a very very strong personality, uh, and very small production. Uh, we we elaborated in this vintage 2021 just uh, 6,500 bottles, so you know it's small quantity, uh, but with uh, uh, elaborated with a lot of care and a lot of passion. And this passion is that we we want to show to the world that we uh, we in Humilla we can also elaborate fantastic rosés wines, uh, tasting tasting. Uh, and, and of course, the color is a is a is a dark color rosé, and the nose you can you can smell you can smell this kind of red fruits uh, cup, uh, cup of red fruits like a uh, strawberry of course raspberry. And these uh, red currants that give also uh, these touches of uh, acidity, and then at the palate, it's fresher. Uh, it shows the uh, the character of the of the soil, the minerality, and also the fresh. Uh, it's the the vineyard is is not faced, so we want all, always to 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 uh, to trap this freshness, and then show also in the wine. It's a very well balanced wine. Uh, I always like to say that the whites have to be always very well balanced, and you can also uh, enjoy all the all the phases of the wine. So this uh, almost sweet wine, uh, sweet nose, uh, but it's, 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 it's not sweet, but you know it's very ripe and very nice, and then the freshness of the mouth, of the palate. Uh, it's a super gastronomic wine, so super nice to drink by glass, of course. Uh, it is not obligatory. It's not mandatory to pair with a uh, with food, but when paired with food, it's it's amazing. And you want this kind of uh, wines, these rosé, dark rosé wines, they they have two faces, so they can also pair with food like uh, seafood and also meats and also rices. And imagine this kind of this is this wine with a carbonara tagliatelle. It's amazing. I like to eat. Sorry, and I. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. And tell me the price. Uh, if I come to the winery as a private person, what would be the price? Uh, with the no price discount. Is, yeah, the price in Spain of this wine is around 10 euros. 10 euros, right? Yeah. Euros. And the production is 6,600 bottles, right? Yeah, it's market on the back label. Yeah, 
yeah yeah okay okay uh well very universal wine uh we like the balance okay uh -huh. yeah right. and uh, the wine is not available in poland yet no yet you have no importer no not yeah. yet okay so guys yeah, it's open right Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, thank you. Stay with us if there's any questions coming in chat, right? And now it's Dimitri, Dimitri Nikolaides uh, from Parajes del Valle. Ah, hope I pronounce it correctly. Parajes del Valle. Bodegas y Viñedos. Dimitri, are you coming back or are you calling me? actually saying you're not coming now hello dimitri press the buttons yes you did it you made it right okay and the microphone and the other my and the microphone so the floor is yours dimitri i'm disappearing and you are appearing and yes well so um carolina already talked a lot about uh humilla I just wanted to show you a few slides uh, that I prepared on my own to explain the, the wine, Parajes del Valle Monastero Ecológico. Um, as uh, it said in the name, um, we work with the, <laughs> we work with different um, grapes that come from different places of uh, the Jumilla wine region. So, for example, this would be one of uh, our vineyards right here. We always look for vineyards that are um, uh, her, um, conducted in uh, organic farming, of course, in a uh, goblet or uh, bush vine, and uh, no irrigation. So, what we want is to produce grapes that are true to the terroir and to the um, variety, which is Monastrel. This would be the Murcia region, Jumilla is right here, and uh, the winery well is in Jumilla. And just don't mind the names, but what I want to show you is that uh, we have um, 28 hectares in our property, but we also have um, agricultures that work with us and uh, we pick grapes from their lands too. And, I wanted to show you that the region we use to produce the Monastrel Parajes del Valle is uh, very wide. So that's why the wine is so complex, because we have a multitude of different grapes that come from different uh, zones of the Jumilla wine region. So that is an example of a vineyard. Uh, we all also look a lot for vineyards that are close to the mountains to keep the climate uh, cooler and have a maturity that is uh, well balanced. And uh, as I said, we work with uh, bush vines that are um, wor um, that we work in uh, organic farming. So about uh, Parajes del Valle. It's a, it's a wine that is a, very elegant, it's balanced. What we do is that we harvest a little bit earlier than uh, the rest of uh, the Jumilla wineries. That allows us to control the alcoholic uh, value of the wine. If you taste Parajes del Valle, Monastero Ecológico, you'll see that it's very, it's very fine, it's very elegant, it's pure, the tannins are soft and, um, and very kind. The flavors are of fresh fruits. If you wait too much for the harvest, you get wines that are very strong, very tannic, uh, and the fruit is, well, uh, more like um, a confiture of fruit. What we want in Parajes del Valle is to produce a wine that is uh, that invites to drink, so people can enjoy not only one glass, but share and having a conversation, eating something, and 
asking for another bottle of wine. So um, that would be it with the uh, Parajes del Valle. Um, the alcoholic fermentation starts in uh, inox uh, tanks and then we pass into, we move the wine before the alcoholic fermentation is over to concrete tanks. So that helps to keep the minerality and, um, and to round the wine during this time in the concrete. Um, we, we always look to, to have grapes that are well balanced, to keep the acidity, to keep the flavors, the taste of the Maestrel grape, which can bring a red uh, fruit, a little bit of uh, black fruit too, but also herbaceous like uh, rosemary, thyme, and other Mediterranean herbs that are in the surroundings of the vineyards. We, we work with uh, many families uh, of agricultures. So what we do is that uh, as soon as uh, the, the plant starts moving and growing, we help them, we follow them, and we can work hand, by, hand on hand with them to produce the grapes in the perfect quality for the wine we want to produce. Good. Okay, thank you. Tell me the production, the total yes. production. Yes, actually, we are producing 200,000 bottles a year. Ah, of this wine only. 200. Of this wine only. We right. now are producing two wines Parajes del Valle Monastero Ecológico and Terraje, which is also Monastrel grape, but uh, the elaboration is a bit different. And your wine uh, is available in Poland, right? According yes, to... we have an importer that is a uh, Navino in Warsaw. In Warsaw. Navino. Nav 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 Navino in Warsaw. Right. Okay. And uh, the, tell me the price in, in uh, Spain, retail, retail price in Spain, more or less? Yes. Here in Spain, in the winery, we are selling it at 9 euros and 50 cents. 9.50. Right. Okay. Okay. Navino Warsaw then. Or Navino. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Dimitris. Uh, we have to speed up uh, as it's uh, pretty late. Any comments, guys? This wine? Uh, it's too early, perhaps. Uh, stay with us, please. Uh, and uh, very elegant. Okay. Thank you. Very elegant. And Thank somebody's you. writing something. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, thanks. Uh, stay with us. Perhaps it, uh, it, it may come with some time. Uh, and now Bodega San Donizio, Dionisio and uh, Inigio Miguel del Olma. Well, I hope I didn't offend him. By Hello, Peter. <laughs> Hello. Good, How are you? good afternoon. Well. Good afternoon. Like, I'm going to, to close the... Yeah, because you look like Zorro now, completely dark. Okay. Yeah. Now better, no? Okay, how are you? Eh? <laughs> Very, Very well. well. Everybody? You... <laughs> Very well. So, I leave you. Uh, the floor is yours. And uh, Esther, do you want to... Nothing, exactly. just uh, Inigo, Inigo, acércate todo lo que puedas porque se te ve muy negro. Muy negro, ¿no? Bueno, sí. this is because Inigo, yes. I'm every, every day working on the land, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well uh, good. So, I leave you, Inigo, and, uh, and the floor is yours, right? Okay. Go on, please. Okay, I explained you just a little bit about... Uh, Bodega San Dionisio. Bodega San Dionisio is a cooperative uh, established at, in 1957. Uh, okay, uh, there, there are in total is more than 700 uh, uh, cooperatives, and we produce not only wine; we produce olive oil and, and other almond and so on. Okay, uh, we have in total. Uh, 5,500 hectares of vineyards. The 80% of our grape are monastrel, obviously, okay, 
and the we have the lands because it's very uh, very very big extension we have uh, from 600 meters over the sea uh, till 950 because of this we have very big difference between some areas and others okay uh, the wine that we are going to introduce is the the SF SF means a Señorío Fuente Alamo. Fuente Alamo is the is the name of our village. Okay, uh, this is a monastery 100% organic. Uh, monastery 100% is organic. Okay, uh, Carolina explained perfectly why we are the the, the leaders of. of organic production all over Spain because of the characteristic of our weather, of our land, of soil, and so on. Okay. In relation with the with the elaboration of, of the of the wine, uh, we use uh, nitrogen protection and intracellular maceration during six, during six days in the, the dextermy. Okay. And we uh, use but in, in natural lease of the area and, and when we are making the the alcoholic the alcoholic and, and malolactic fermentation yeah. we have uh, during six days with all the lease in the in the fermentation and after of this we have uh, only the 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 the, the the, we have only the, the fine list during 30 days. Yeah? In, um, I think it's a, a wine very easy to drink. If you, you can make pairing practically with, uh, with any kind of food, not only meat, till uh, with the typical rice of our area, pasta, if any, any kind. No? And I think it's a, we are in this moment we are not uh, selling in in Poland, eh? but uh, we want to we would like to introduce the uh, wine in in this market. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Tell me the the price retail price in in Spain is yes in Spain we have in the shop in the in the winery around six, seven euros, okay? About the design that they are, this is, this design is a little bit, is a mandala, is something uh, Asian style, okay? And mm -hmm. we are, uh, 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 we, we, we write here, uh, se feliz, se feliz in English is be happy, okay? Because it's the same than SF. Okay. Ah, so it's not science fiction. It's uh, yeah. Science. Then okay. this is uh, the, yeah. This this is uh, if you drink this wine, you will be happy for sure. Okay, <laughs> especially okay. not only one glass. Okay, more. <laughs> okay, more than two glasses guarantee you happiness. Good. Uh, okay, and the total production is uh, how much? Uh, this wine we are making around two hundred thousand bottles. But, okay. Thank you. Any comments, guys? Well, well, the, we love the bottle design, but this is about the the previous one, uh, yeah. as I see. So perhaps you know, Inigo, uh, uh, stay with us because the comments are coming with some retardation here, and this is due to the very specific weather we have, uh, you know, in Poland right now. Something is somebody is writing something, and. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Very nice and balanced. We like it here. Ah, this is uh, so. This is about your wine. Nice and balanced. And okay. Light. Then light. there is. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now, bye. Bye, bye bye. Bye bye. And now, bodegas uh, Vinia Elena and uh, and Fernando Pacheco. Hello, Fernando. Join us, please. Fernando, good afternoon. Yes. Hello, the micro, micro, don't forget. Yeah. So how are you guys? Fine, <laughs> <laughs> and you. Ah, okay. So hi to everyone. Um, 
And yes, so my, my name is Fernando Pacheco. I am, I am in charge of the Expo department. And my presentation is going to be about three points. One is going to be talking about the story of the winery. Then I, I am going to talk about the, our vines and then about the wine that we have today. So in this image, you can see the family. It's a family business. And here you can see the first, second, and third generation. And my, my great-grandfather, Paco Pacheco, started the business in 1948, producing wine at the house. So that was the initial step of the winery, producing wine at the house and without any kind of origin. Then the, the second generation in 2002 started to uh, making wine with the appellation Humeida. In 2002 was the first vintage that we have. Can we go to the next slide? So here you can see the, the, the current generation is the third one with my, with my mother, Amy Pacheco and Elena Pacheco, my aunt. And, in, and also here you can see the fourth generation is already on board at the winery. So in my case, Expo Department and then my two six stars, one is in the tourism department and the other one is in the buying department. department. And if we go to the next one, so it's very important <clears throat> for me to explain the how we work in the in the in the in the land because we have two main two main brands one is bruma del estrecho de marin where all the wines are pure monastuel single vineyard wines from different locations different altitudes and then we have familia pacheco where we blend monastrel with different varieties like sira eh, garnacha cabernet sauvignon and also in familia pacheco we combine different plots around the, appell the appellation, around Jumilla, the entire appellation. If we go to the next slide, we can see here the map, and in the map you can see the winery is located in the south of the appellation. It's around 20, 20 kilometers from the winery, driving to the south, and the name of our location is Valle Estrecho de Marin. And we are located, uh, the altitude is 360 meters above sea level. And here we have our 50% of our, of our plots. The other 50% of our estate is located in the north of Jumilla. We have to drive from Jumilla to Finca CQ. It's around 10 kilometers from Jumilla. And in Finca CQ, we have uh, another 50% of our estate, another, another 40 hectares. And in the Finca CQ, the altitude is higher, it's 700 meters. And as you see, the different altitudes is very important because we start the harvest at the south around end of August, but we finish harvest at the north area mid September, end of September. So different ripening process, different style of wines. And we go to the next one. Here you can see one of our plots. This is Pasela Particiones, located in Tobarra. It's another town of the Humilla Appellation. And you can see here Elena with uh, Manolo is one of our wine growers. So in our case, we have our own plots. And also we buy grapes from some growers around Humilla. So the wine that we are going to try today, if we go to the wine, to the slide of the wine, Can we change the, the slide? So it's gonna it's gonna be the Pacheco organic. This this range of wine, as I said, is a is a combination of different plots around around Humilla. And here we have a pure monastrel organic wine. And and the wine is the, as you know, Pacheco is our son name. That's why it's familia Pacheco. And if we go to the wine, it's a 2020 Monas 12, bottled in May. So one year, more or less one year in bottle, more than one year in bottle. And for me, the wine on the nose, we have plums, we have raspberry, we have strawberry, and also a spice, like a black pepper, clove. And this is the fruit driven style. We, we, we don't use the oak aging here. And Oh, 
for me the palette is it's medium body medium to full body but both medium for me and quite nice concentration quite nice flavor intensity and this one is quite versatile for pizza pasta sandwich any kind of salads and the guys the the price of this wine is 36 slotis and and i will send you the link because the one is available in poland i will send you the link in the, in the chat and then you can see the website of the importer and the el catador el catador you. you can find you can find the wine i think they have three different shops in in varsovia and mm -hmm. probably this wine could be in a restaurant around 70 slotis between 70 and 100 slotis the production is 50,000 bottles of this wine and the the whole winery is producing around around 400,000 bottles so this nice horse in the nose yeah leather tobacco it's not only fruits here yeah it's quite it's quite it's quite complex because the monastrel do you know in the first a step of the life is more, is more fruit driven but maybe later you can find more complexity even some some tobacco notes yes so as i said it's quite versatile because you can choose a steak you can choose a for example sandwich pasta so it's it's nice to to have this kind of wine by the glass in a restaurant for example very nice thank you the, the cigar smoked on the horse you know like riding a horse Good. Fantastic. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments, guys? So just uh, what I guess was on. Okay. Right. Well, uh, very silent. You're very silent today. Uh, so let's pass to Bodegas, uh, Bodegas Pio de Ramo and Agustin. Hello. Agustin. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> I'm in the binder. Right. I, the floor okay. is yours, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Agustin Miñana. I'm the winemaker in the in this winery, Pio del Ramo. Now I'm here in the middle of the of the vines because I'm not very good with the presentation and everything. So it's better to show you where we are. In the, even though Carolina has explained very well uh, everything around, but it's better to see. Uh, as you see here, the down, uh, down there is the pine trees. Here we have Tim. There, in the other side, we have olive trees. So everything, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, cultives that we have here. This, these vines are monastrel. This is are around, they are around uh, 40, 45 years old. They are start uh, growing around uh, um, four weeks or so. We get a lot of rainfall this, this spring. So we think it's gonna be a, a very good, uh, very good year if everything goes uh, like now. Uh, regarding to the winery, uh, we own 150 hectares, mainly Monastrel, but also we are making uh, white, uh, white wines like Verdejo and, uh, and uh, Chardonnay, and Chardonnay and Moscatel. But the main uh, production of our winery is of course Monastrel. And uh, the, the winery is family owned by the, the name of the winery is Pio del Ramo. So Pio is the name. Here you can see the landscape and the, uh, this, this building is a quite simple uh, building, but very useful. And then we, as I told you, we own 150 hectares and we, we start the harvest normally at the uh, at the middle of August and we end like in in November so it's a very big very long long harvest i think it's one of the most long longest 
uh, harvest in the world here in Jumilla because it starts with the white, as I said, in, in August and we finish in, in late October. Um, if you want, we can taste the wine that we are going to, 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 to taste today. I have, well, this is, I, okay, yes. I have my bottle also here, so a little bit. Okay, this is a, a blend of uh, four grapes. The main grape is Monastrel. Also, we have uh, a very well adapted uh, varieties. Here is uh, the Petit Verdot because it's a long, long cycle variety. So it, uh, it arrives to the ripeness more or less at the same time that uh, Monastrel. Here the blend is like 70% of, of Monastrel, 20% uh, of Petit Verdot and 5 of Cabernet and, and Syrah. As you know, Syrah is a, a grape Mediterranean also. It's very well adapted to the area. And also the Cabernet uh, is a universal variety. So the, um, the wine starts the, the the fermentation in inox tank and the, the alcoholic and the malolactic is done in uh, in concrete tanks. After the malolactic, we put in the wine in barrels, and after 10, 12, 14, it depends on the year. We do the blend. It not every year is the the same blend. And then let's go to to taste the wine. Here. Uh, I feel a lot of uh, of fruit, but also I feel I would like you you will be here because the smell of of the landscape that we have here is a little bit what we have in the in the in the glass. This kind of Mediterranean herbs, a little bit of licorice, and also from the aging we get some some. Uh, leather, some tobacco, some spices, some white pepper. It's a very complex wine in the in the nose and in the in the mouth. It's um, full bodied wine and sweet uh, sweet tannins round is mouth mouthful and it's perfect to to, to eat uh, red meat or barbecue, stews, and that kind of, of, uh, of foods. Okay? Yeah, very nice. Okay. Too much windy in the, in the microphone or not? No, 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 no wind okay. at all. No, no, okay. only you. Okay. okay, tell me, and the wine is imported to Poland by? Yeah, by Konrad Wiener. Kondrat Vina. Yeah, okay. yes, yes. Kondrat Vina. Yeah. yeah. They have also the Verdejo and the, I think, the, the white, yes. Okay, and how many bottles do you produce of this? Of uh, this wine, we produce around uh, 15,000. 15,000? 15, yeah, yeah. And what's the price in Spain? The price in Spain is 10 euros. 10 euros, right. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great wine, we like it. Okay. okay. Huh? Huh? So, Kondrat Vina. Yes. He's living in Spain, I believe. Who? The, the guy, the wine? Kondrat. I don't know. I, I, I never meet him. I'm the one who makes the wine, but also I try to say it. <laughs> Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Agustin. Try because it's not my it's not my job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank Bye. you, thank you. Stay with us, please, right. and a um, beautiful evening yes. there in the vineyard. Right. Yes, Look. good. And now, guys, Bodega Sierra Norte and Jose Canto. And yes, hi, hi, Jose. So. Turn it on. Right. Good evening. Dobry wieczór. Jose has this problem. He don't know how to uh, open the, the micro. Wow. Maybe someone can help. 
Maybe he's blocked by by you. No, 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 no. He uh, he got all the rights. Uh, the headset, perhaps. Jose, use the headset. Okay. If you have any. Mm, I can't hear you. Ah, oh, that's no good. Okay, now. Yes, yes, yes. You made it great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, so you hear you hear me properly? We hear you properly and we see you properly. Okay, so well, thank you. Um, um, I'm sorry because you know I, I the mobile and I am here in the car as you can see. I am not in the vineyard or anything, so I am in the car because I'm traveling. I'm traveling. To, uh, I'm I'm trying to sell uh, uh, wine, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway. Um, um so i don't know um how do you want that we we start the presentation hello it's up to you it's up to you it's uh whatever you 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 want we can you can tell us a bit about sierra norte and the uh, and the area where it's located and then a bit okay. about the wine yeah okay um okay um i as i told you piotr in the morning I'll, i'm gonna try to do it in polish and uh, see how how my polish is <laughs> so dobre wieczór um jestem jose canto uh, jestem directorem exportu bodega bodegi sierra norte tak bodega sierra norte zaczyna się um f util rekene tak es szczepem uh, bobal uh, in 1999, przepraszam. Uh, I potem um, um, zobaczyliśmy uh, uh, możliwości z, z, z ciepłem uh, monast monastrelem, tak? I decydowaliśmy 10 lat temu zaczynać w Humidi. I, i jesteśmy bardzo zadowol zadowoleni, tak? Uh, I uh, jesteśmy uh, koło. Um, we are between Humilla and Pinocho. Um, uh, um, Miasto nazywa się Caña del Trigo, tak? I, and for the people who know a little bit the, the area, so I'll tell you that this is, is an um, international speed uh, car circuit there, close to where we are, so just in case that you come to visit. Um, um, okay, uh, so this is uh, Bodega Sierra Norte is a family company, uh, and as I said, we started in in Util Requena and we moved like ten years ago to Humilla. Uh, mamy własne uh, uh, winogrony, uh, 150 hektarów, tak? I to znaczy, że, że produkujemy nasze nasze wina tylko z z z, z uh, własnymi uh, winogronami, tak? To jest dla nas bardzo ważne, dla, dla jakości I, i możemy um, um, zobaczyć, że, że jakość każdy rok jest, jest stabilna i, i takie, ta, ta, taka sama jakość. Tak? Um, I ja nie wiem, jeżeli możemy już z prezentacją zaczynać, Piotr? Tak, tak. Zaczynamy w takim razie fact sheet, right? Tak. Zaczynamy. Notka techniczna wina. Tutaj są zdjęcia z piwnicy. Jeszcze po drodze. Bodega Sierra Norte i z winiarni. Ale w takim razie przejdźmy do notki technicznej. Right? So a fact sheet now. Ok. Um... Wino, które prezentujemy dzisiaj, to jest, nazywa się Equilibrio 9. To jest monastrel 100%, tak? I 9 jest taki prosto, to znaczy, że wino jest 9 miesięcy w, w bewce, tak? Mhm. Ja powiedziałem 100% monastrel, koło 40 lat mają wiwnicy, tak? Przepraszam, tak. 40 years old and more, more or less. Everything is bush vines, okay? So no, uh, no wire here. Mm -hmm. Dzięki Bogu mamy w Humilie dużo, dużo 
busza, tak? I, i możemy zrobić pra- i, i oczywiście nie jest um, jest um, it's relatively uh, easy for us to work with these uh, vineyards because the, the weather is very dry and, and the um, wino jest jak uh, możecie zobaczyć ekologiczny i, i, i vegan też, tak? Um, i um, here maybe the, the most important thing of the wine is that we try to make a, a style of wine which is sometimes, you know, the monasteries they can be maybe too sweet or very, very ripe, you know, and we try to, to keep a little bit of freshness in the wine. So this is for us important so that at the end, so you you can continue and you can finish the bottle and it's not like too heavy or too like too ripe or too, too overwhelming, you know, sometimes. So we, we try to keep this, this, this freshness. That's for us very important. And of course, it's a very equilibrio in um, po hispansku. Uh, um, um, znaczy, uh, ba- balance, correct. Tak? Uh, mm-hmm. And I think it's a very, very balanced wine. So it has, you know, a lot of fruit. But at the, at, at the same time, also, it has, you know, a nice balance with, between the fruit and, and the oak these nine months uh, is um, 60% is, is um, uh, American oak and 40% is French oak of these nine months. And uh, actually, it's not super new oak so that we, we try to, to, to keep more the fruit than, 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 the, than the, the oaky uh, um, um, uh, taste in the wine. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ja nie wiem, jeśli macie pytania, ale, albo, albo potem no. też. Wspaniałe wino, dziękujemy. Great Polish, brawo. Dziękuję. Yeah. And uh, tell me, the, where, where did you, gdzie nauczyłeś się polskiego? E, uczyłem się w, w Warszawie, tak, na Uniwersytecie w, w Warszawskiej, tak, kiedy pracowałem tam dawno temu na, na ambasadzie hiszpańskiej, tak, I, i, i ja mieszkałem tam i decydowałem, no słuchaj, no, ja, ja uczę się polskiego, no. no. I, I jeszcze, i dzisiaj mieszkałem, no zobaczymy, jak, jak będzie po polsku. I jeżeli nie, coś nie, nie mogę, no, no po, 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 po angielsku. Hmm. Okej. Okay. Dziękuję, dziękuję, Jose. To bardzo Thank było you. przyjemne. Thank you very much. Wspaniałe wina, dziękujemy. Yeah. And the, the um, wine, is, wine is available in Poland, but very cena, limited quantity. Cena, cena tego wina w Hiszpanii to jest około 8-10 euro, tak? Na sklepie. Mm-hmm. I produkujemy około 90 tysięcy butelek. 90 tysięcy tak? butelek. I w Polsce można znaleźć na sklepie Fine Wine. Tak? Fine Wine, ok. Tak jest. Fine Wine, okay. ja myślę, że mają w tej chwili 11 albo 12 sklepy w Polsce, ja myślę. Tak. Mm, no tak, tak, mają już no. trochę, to prawda. Ok. Tak jest. Good. Thank you very much. Thank Dobrze. you. Dziękuję bardzo i wszystkiego dobrego, ne? Wszystkiego dobrego w takim razie i świetny polski ciągle super, kupimy, tutaj są informacje, no to dobrze. A powiedz mi jeszcze na koniec, Francuzi mówią, że pierwsza rzecz, której się nauczyli w Polsce, po polsku, to, to była pierwsza odpowiedź, jaką usłyszeli na każde pytanie, była to zależy. To zależy. To zależy. Ile to kosztuje? To zależy. No zależy, to zależy. To, to zależy. No, to tak. Ale to, to byłby więc no, chyba w, w Galicji oni mówią e, bardzo często. No depende, no depends. Tak zależy, tak? No jest tak samo, tak samo. No, no. <laughs> okay. Dziękuję. To była przyjemność, że jesteś pierwszym, nie, drugim mówiącym po polsku winiarzem w, w czasie tych 40 paru seminariów, także okay. brawo, brawo. Dziękuję, dzięki. dziękuję bardzo. Dzięki. 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 And now, guys, now it's uh, Bodegas Luson and uh, Jose, another Jose, right. Another Jose, Jose, uh, Jose Requena. I am here or no? Can you, can you listen to me? Hello? Yes. 
Not Hello, good evening. Now we can see you, but we can hear you. Yeah. Hi. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, please, Piotr, stop me when the five minutes gone because I will start talking and I don't I know when I will finish my five minutes. When I appear like that, you know, it means time's up, right? Uh, can I, can, I don't, I don't know. Can, can, uh, can I share my, my, my presentation on, on my screen? I don't know uh, how to yeah, do it. Yeah, you can try. Maybe Press in the, the second button. button. First, open the document. Anyway, uh, don't worry. I, I will leave it like this. It's okay. It's okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, my name is Jose. Thank you very much for 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 being here with me. Uh, I'm export manager of uh, Bodega Duzon over over six years. So I I will talk a little bit about the history of Bodega Duzon. So Luzon uh, started in the 1816, the history, uh, with an officer that was uh, of the Spanish Navy that was destination on the island of Luzon. So Luzon is the name of the island on the Philippines. Philippines is the, is the it was a colony that belongs to the Spanish Empire. Empire and in the past there were uh, a guy uh, our founder that was stationed on the on the island of Luzon 100 years ago and this guy came back to to Spain to to Jumilla region and established the first the first uh, plots and winery and open and, and plant the first monastery and put the name Finca Luzon on the honor of his stay on uh, on the on the on the island of Luzon in Philippines that's why our name Luzon came from the Philippines because our history started 100 years ago on this island of the Philippines. So that's why uh, our name. Actually, the, the, the company is a, is a family owned company, family run company. Uh, nowadays, uh, we have owned uh, about 500 hectares in total, uh, mainly uh, of Monastrel, but we also cultivate some Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot. Uh, Syrah, uh, some Merlot, and some whites like uh, Macabeo or Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, already uh, Carolina speak about humilla and climate and everything, so I will speak uh, about uh, our way of uh, cultivation. So uh, we cultivate the, the grape varieties separate from each other, so plots of Cabernet don't, are not mixed with uh, Monastrel. We don't mix the the grapes uh, until uh, we are going to blend the wine for bottling. So we uh, elaborate and vinification all the grapes separately. I mean, the Monastrel or Cabernet uh, never blend. So that's uh, allow us to achieve uh, the perfect balance uh, of the of the of each grape variety separately. So uh, in our winery. Uh, we are uh, following the most important uh, certifications on quality. So we are certified as uh, IFC or BRC that allow us uh, to work directly with big supermarket retails like uh, Lidl or Aldi or Carrefour in, 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 in Europe. You are seeing now the pictures of uh, our old uh, part of the winery, but uh, we have new facilities from 2005. Uh, we have a new winery with modern uh, modern facilities and techniques that allow us to to make uh, uh, quality wines. Uh, also, as a curiosity, uh, in the in the Appellation Jumilla, in the Denominación de Origen Jumilla, we are one of the most important wineries making tours for the tourists. So before pandemic in 2019, uh, we had 8,000 visitors as a tourist that uh, came uh, every day. We have a tasting tour and tasting at 11 in the morning in English for tourists that for tourist people that are. Uh, near to Alicante or Benidorm or Murcia, came to us during the morning, stay uh, a couple of hours with us, visiting the winery inside and having a tasting. So we are quite strong in the in the in the tourist uh, in the tourist uh, sector. As uh, as Bodegas Duzon, we are present in the Polish market over over seven years. Uh, uh, our uh, importer is Ambra and uh, you will find our wines 
in uh, Centrum Bina. So I guess, guys, you know uh, the importance. So Centrum Bina has around 34,000 uh, liquor stores spread around all Poland. And you are able to find our wines there, not only the Altos Dulcon that we are going to taste later, but also our uh, white wines, rosé, other organic wines. Since a few months ago, we launched a non sulfites uh, wine that you can find it in, in Centrum Vina, very interesting. And also our top premium wines, Alma Dulcon. So I invite you guys to visit Centrum Vina and to taste uh, the rest of the wines of the range of Bodegas Luzon. You will be surprised. Uh, OK, let's go for the for the meat. So Altos Luzon is one of our uh, iconic wines, one of the most emblematic wines. We are doing this wine since 2000. It's very well recognized in the United States, Japan, and Canada. So the Altos de Luzon is uh, a 100% Monastel, of course. Uh, we want to bring here our best uh, and the best of our vineyards. Monastel 100% uh, with an average of uh, 50, 60 years old, uh, picked by ham, of course. And uh, in this case, we uh, have an, an aging of uh, 12 months uh, in American and French oak. We use new oak for for the for for this wine and um, what to say uh, the characteristics of the monastrel of this altos uh, the, the the luzon is uh, you know the characteristic of uh, of uh, of this wine is uh, in in taste is a long and powerful character uh, with the usual hints and flowers of the monastrel as uh, blackberries, as, uh, uh, black notes, also the rosemary and the and all the herbs that are around from from the from the vineyard. You will see also the 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 the, the taste the, the toast notes from the from the oak from the new barrick, but everything is well integrated. So uh, this is a powerful wine with a high contain in 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 aromas and uh, and characteristic, but everything very well integrated with the oak uh what to, what what else to say uh i don't know Piotr, how many minutes i mean <laughs> i have so more well, um, that's, that's 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 it i i, I believe uh Jose. and what's the price of this wine in spain the the in spain uh, you uh, you can buy this bottle for around 15, 13 euros on the on the on the winery uh, and in Slotis, I found it on the internet around 100 Slotis. So I invite you guys to follow us in, in social media, uh, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and Facebook. We are very active. And, uh, and of course, uh, you will find video presentations of our company in YouTube if you click Bodegas Luzon. So okay. thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And here's a comment coming from another Jose from uh, Equilibrio and 92 points from James Suckling on me today. Great. Congrats. Congrats, uh, Jose Canto. And now it's, uh, thank you very much, Jose. And okay. now it's Bodegas Besi and Juanjo. Juanjo, who's Spanish as well. Juan Jose. Hello. No microphone. Microphone? No? Still no? Wait in. Now it's working, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Uh, it's Great. a pleasure to, to be here and, and to meet all our uh, attendees. My name is Juanjo, a sport uh, director of uh, Cooperativa BSI. BSI. Uh, we are the oldest and the main cooperative in Jumillare, founded in 1934. And they own in our 400 farmers own uh, roughly for uh, 1300 hectares. Uh, okay, so uh, as you can imagine, uh, we we have different kind of fincas or plots. But talking about the the wine that uh, I have come here to talk about. Okay, our Hemina range, our Hemina range, let's say, is the top of our of our uh, uh, wines. Uh, okay, 
Uh, if you if we, you can pass the the photograph maybe to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are proudly the the owners. Our farmers are the owners of the largest extension of prefiloxera uh, uh, grafted uh, rootstock of monastery in the world. 80% uh, more or less of our production is monastery. No, then we have other varieties as as uh, Petit Verdot, Cabernet, Syrah, etc. No? But uh, Monastrel is our, our main variety and uh, uh, let's say that 80% uh, of our Monastrel is uh, ecological. Not all certified, but in practical is ecological. I think Caroline explained very well the characteristics of, of, our, of our climate. Here, here we have a Gemina, Gemina range, partly, you can see uh, he, here in the middle, we have uh, one of our fincas. We have th three very special fincas with roughly 2,000 barrels production. Finca La Cabra, Finca Los Tomilleres, and Finca El Volcán. And our wine, Gemina, is coming partly from these uh, three fincas, okay? Uh, what, what we do uh, from each individual uh, fincas, uh, uh, this uh, these plots have very low yield, like uh, one one kilogram, one bottle uh, per vine. No? And then from these three fincas and other selected fincas, we pick up the the, the berries and to produce this uh, Gemini uh, cube selection. Uh, and then, uh, well, about, about the elaboration, of course, is uh, during the night in boxes of fourteen uh, kilogram seeds to avoid damages. Uh, then this uh, selection table. And then it's, uh, it goes to uh, 10,000 liters of stainless steel uh, uh, chunks uh, where uh, under uh, control temperature uh, during three weeks. And then the one week, uh, the malolactic uh, uh, fermentation. And then it would go to the uh, barrels were spent from eight to 10 months, depending on the, on the year. Depending on uh, what our um, enologist decide, talking about our enologist, our head enologist is uh, Pablo Osorio. Probably is, many of you know him, one of the best enologists in Spain right now. And he's with us since uh, almost four years ago. So we're also very proud of counting on uh, him. Uh, then the barrels, about the barrels, uh, the, the barrels are predominant French, but also, also American. A small grain and uh, have like uh, 36 months uh, of drying. Uh, okay, so about the wine itself, uh, we, we can say that uh, it's uh, it's a very intense, uh, in very intense wine with lively tones. Uh, the aroma is a uh, deep ripe fruit, and uh, I think it combines very well the, the 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 light oak aromas with the with the new oak. And uh, this uh, has a toasty touch and, and spicy tones. No? Uh, and then uh, the, the tannins are, are very, very smooth and mature. And the, the persistence, the final persistence is, is very long. It pairs uh, perfectly with all kind of, of meats, uh, wine that red meats, also rices, uh, white rice, paella, uh, cured cheeses, middle cured cheeses. A beef stew, uh, vegetables or stock and grilled chicken. Uh, we're very proud of, of this wine. Recently, we've got the gold medal in Berlin, Berlin Wine Trophy, a gold medal in Mundus Vini, a gold medal in Wine Up uh, selections. And uh, uh, just two years ago, we had the 95 uh, uh, points in the counter contest. Okay, so it's a one of our flagships in, in the bodega for sure. Uh, the production of, of this wine is uh, roughly 40,000 bottles uh, this year, for instance. And uh, the price, in my opinion, is very affordable. If you come to our winery, you could find it for um, just under eight euros, say, uh, 70, 70, 7, 7 7.8 euros, under eight euros. Mm. Although we sell other wines in Poland, this wine is not sold in Poland yet. So I'm struggling to to eat, and uh, I'm really uh, I'm in the process of, of looking for for a distributor to sell this beautiful wine in in Poland, which I hope it will be happening soon. Hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Comments, congratulations, well deserved, great wine. Okay, and uh, I, I'm a little confused because it's it's Gemina or Hemina finally. Well, uh, we pronounce it the same way that you pronounce the H or a J, Hemina, Hemina. But okay. if you if you say Gemina, I will understand. No problem. If you say Femina, it's all, also good, right? <laughs> Thank you very much, Piotr. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 well, how do you like this wine, guys? It's only Yolanda liking it. Well, I'm waiting for your comments. You're not very open today, however. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Juan Ho. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, now it's number nine, Bodegas Torres Castillo and uh, Anna, Anna on the mobile phone, I believe. Ah, it's another Anna. So, yeah, another Anna on the on the computer. Let's Hello. See. Yeah, we can hear you, Anna. I, I hope. Can you see me? Uh, we can't see you. Uh, which is a moment. Let me let me try one moment. You can't okay. see me. We okay. Can't see you. Um. Oh. Hang on. How can I do this with the camera? Um, Press the button. Yes, I'm <laughs> pressing, I'm pressing. And it's not reacting? Now you're going to miss the beautiful ladies we have in Spain. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you know, the voice, the voice is really attractive, but, uh, well, <laughs> I'd like on. to see the, uh, the rest. I don't know how to do this now. Hang on. Okay. You can log One out moment. and come back. Nos encontró dispositivo, se me dice. We have a camera install, installed, but apparently it doesn't work. Sí, nada. No, we, presenta, no? Ana, presenta directamente. I'm really sorry. Vamos un poco, un poco okay, ya de so y, let's go no without the camera. Radio is better than nothing. If it doesn't work, let's let's try without the without the camera. Ana. And now it's without the voice as well. Oh, she's yes. gone. <laughs> we lost Anna. Hello, do you hear yes. me? She's coming back. Hello? Yeah, we hear yeah. you. Okay, great. Hello, nice to meet you all. And congratulations for organizing this seminar to both you and to... Uh, uh, the designation of origin, Humilla. Um, well, my name is Ana Gomez. You can't see me, but you can hear me, fortunately. And I'm the responsible for export within Bodega Torre Castillo. Uh, Bodega Torre Castillo is a family winery located in Montalegre del Castillo, and which begins in the 19th when uh, 90s, sorry, when Antonio Lopez. Uh, decided to abandon the cooperatism to start making his own wines. Um, While well, having a lot of uh, long tradition and experience in viticulture and knowing the potential of its old vineyards of Monastrel uh, made him consider building the winery, as you can see on the picture, in 1997. Um, Torre Castillo made the first elaboration in 1997 um, and it was only after two years of testing the different plots um, when we decided to make the first wine for bottling in 1999, which was, of course, a young red monastrel wine. Um, that same year, uh, the Crianza Cave and the bottling plant was uh, built. Uh, well, the winery, Bodega Torre Castillo, uh, has 100 hectares of own vineyards uh, distributed in different areas within the term of Monte Alegre and the Jumilla protected designation of origin. 80% of our production is Monastrel, uh, which is the most adapted variety to the terrain and the climate. Uh, as Carolina has told us, uh, it is the native variety of Jumilla. Uh, production is about 4,000 kilos per hectare. Um, 
10% of our production is of the white variety Sauvignon Blanc, uh, formed in trellis and uh, uh, with a production of about 7,000 kilos per hectare. And the remaining 10% is Garnacha Tintuera. Uh, in total, we produce about 500,000 kilos uh, between the three varieties. So between Monastrel, Sauvignon Blanc, and Garnacha Tintorera. Uh, we make about 350,000 bottles per year. Um, as Carolina explained, most of our soils are limestone and limestone soils facilitate a good development of the vineyards, uh, contribute a great alcohol content uh, to the wines as well as a low acidity and a great variety of aromas. Um, well, we have presented El Tobar. Uh, El Tobar is, is the name of, of the plot. Um, our largest wine plot is this one, El Tobar, uh, which covers about 45 hectares, uh, of which 70% is Monastrel, uh, formed in low bushes, and 30% is Garnacha Tintorera on this plot, also formed in low bushes and on dry, uh, on dry soil. Um, it is a, hill, a hillside plot and it is oriented to the north, uh, so they are cooler and area lands uh, where ripening is slower and where we obtain aromas of greater intensity and we achieve an outstanding health uh, in the grape. Um, hillsides are less deep soils and the vineyards are going to grow uh, in more Austern terrains, um, so we can obtain a very important balance between production and correct uh, ripening. Uh, most of our plots are formed in low bushes, uh, which is the oldest uh, conduction system. It is a free to grow system without space limitations. So, this type of vineyard is the one we like the most. Uh, due to its sustainability and its adaptation to the climate, soil and uh, variety. Uh, well, our philosophy is to work viticulture, so it's very important to control the fields and the vineyards from pruning uh, to harvest. Well, as you can see, El Tobar, it's, um, it's um, a red age uh, wine of a, a Monastrel, 100%. Um, the harvest has been carried out by hand in 400 kilo cages, boxes, to keep the quality of the grape intact. Um, it stays in, it remains in, in oak barrels for about nine months. Um, and it goes very, very well with, well, everything, but especially, of course, with rice, cheese or meat. Uh, of this wine, we produce about 20,000 bottles and retail price is about seven euros per bottle seven euros yes okay okay and you have no importer no 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 forty thousand so um 40, sorry forty thousand bottles right twenty twenty thousand bottles sorry, yes sorry. yes very elegant rich and complex wines we really Ex love it so far right mm. great Great. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't see us, uh, I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what we because we we bought this camera especially for uh, some some well events, yeah, and now I don't know why uh, I cannot connect it. So I'm I apologize for it. So maybe the best thing is you to visit. Yes, we I sent a picture. Of the best is you to come and visit our winery, and then you will meet us in person. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you very much. So not available in Poland at the moment and uh, 7 euro 20,000 bottles uh, 7 euro is uh, retail price in Spain oh you, we lost Anna but uh, uh, well I'm not Anna if, if you right so now it's Bodegas Juan Gil yeah I, I, I don't know how to how to very uh, yeah. and this will be and this will be as Carolina making comments on this one. Yeah? So Juan, it's Juan, and Gil, 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 whatever. What? Juan, Gil, Gil. 
Hill. Like Damon Hill. No, Damon Hill. Uh, like Humilla. <laughs> like Humilla. Well, very yes, um, oh. I'm going to, to explain and talk about, about this winery and this wine in particular. Uh, please excuse uh, the representative. He has had a personal issue and cannot be here with us today. So, so I will try to, to cover for him um, and talk about the, the winery and Juan Gil Silver label. Um, Juan Gil Winery is one of the oldest wineries in Jumilla. It's located in the northern part of the region in a very beautiful um, a place called La Aragona, located at over 800 meters above sea level. And it's one of the wineries that uh, has uh, more sustainable practices, not only in the vineyard, but also in the cellar. It has invested a lot of money so as to um, be as energy efficient as possible and uh, to also um it also uh reuses the 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 different uh residues from the crops uh to make compost and hummus for the for the then for the soil to treat the the soil and increase matter organic matter in the soil um, so yeah, it's a flagship of sustainable flag, uh, pr uh, practices in Jumilla and in, in Spain in general. Um, Juan Hill Silver Label is uh, one of the most uh, sold wine, uh, wines in, in Spain. Um, it was awarded um, organic certification in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So this vintage that you're going to try is already organic uh, certified. It's also vegan. Um, uh, this wine was produced with monastrel grapes from very old uh, non-irrigated vines. Um, I think they're over 50 year old. Uh, monastrel vines uh, located in, as I said, in the northern part of Jumilla. Uh, it was fermented in stainless steel and matured in French oak barrels for around 12 months. And uh, despite the 15% alcohol, uh, it has a very nice balance in the palate because it uh, it's accompanied by a very uh, smooth acidity uh, the fruit is not overripe. Um, it has hints of the of the very well integrated oak uh, with the fruit, uh, thanks to the toasting of the barrels, which was reduced in this vintage. So it's nice, more nicely integrated in the wine. Uh, so yeah, it's a varietal wine, monastery wine, uh, juicy, soft, and very drinkable. Uh, the production of this label is around 300,000 300, bottles, if I'm not mistaken. And um, as I said, it's one of the most sold wines in, in Spain, thanks to a very uh, uh, good quality price ratio, which, uh, uh, of course, every consumer demands. And... Um, and it's a, well, I think it's a very good example of Monastrel with uh, some 12, uh, with, um, sorry, with a 12 month aging. Um, I don't know if I can go any further. I think I said uh, enough. <laughs> do you know the importer? Uh, no, I don't know the importer. It's sorry. Available and the price in Spain is about. Uh, the price in Spain is around, uh, I think, 13, 14 euro, 14 if I'm not euro. mistaken. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, comments. Great alcohol is not overwhelming. We like it and we love sustainability. Yeah. Yola, you know you, I can't pronounce sustainability, but well, okay. And uh, uh, fine wine has this wine. Okay, so fine wine is the importer, right? Okay, okay fine wine. Another one, another wine from Spain, from Humidia at fine wine shops. Good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Carolina. 
Thank, Thank you very you. much. And now it's uh, it's Bodega Silvano Garcia and Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Hello. Oh, yeah. We can see you, we can hear you. Go yeah, on. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. After 10 wineries, I, I, I already tried <laughs> to connect. So I would like to explain about our winery. Uh, Bodega Silvano Garcia is a familiar winery since 1925. Actually, we are uh, with the third generation, Silvano Garcia. We have two wineries, like this one is the old one uh, from 1945 in the center of Jumilla, but now we are just uh, um, doing visit, uh, uh, wine touring, sorry, uh, uh, making events and uh, more or less. And uh, this one, this picture, like you see, is the new winery, uh, eco-efficient, uh, like we building on, on 2019. And there we move all the, the wine making and bottling uh, from our wines. So the, like you see in other pictures, like this is a Silvano Garcia. And in the, in the last one picture is the wine tourist like we are doing every single day. <laughs> and it's a good part from our old wine, winery, sorry. So I would like to explain about Viña Onda Crianza uh, 2017 Vintage. It's a 100% monastery uh, red wine. Uh, this wine, uh, like you taste, uh, tasting now, um, is a, it's have a very intensive uh, ruby color. If you just... Uh, the tasting uh, files, please. Yes. So it's half a very inten intensive ruby color. Uh, on the nose, uh, we have uh, ripe uh, red fruit, balsamic aromas, and as well, vanilla, cinnamon, and uh, cocoa from the oak, uh, French and American oak barrel, barrel both barrel. And uh, this is eight months in a French and American oak barrel. And it's from the vine jar, uh, half around 25 years old. So that is giving up, helping us uh, to uh, making crianza wines, like Viña Onda Crianza. In the, in the mouth, we can find a very pleasant tannin with a medium acidity and long, long persistence, powerful and fresh at the same time. If you want to pair, uh, it's perfectly with the red meat and bass meat uh, food. So the price of this uh, Viña Onda Crianza in Spain is uh, around 12 and a half euro. 12 and 50 cents, sorry, euro. Okay, thank you. And the total production is about? It's 8,000 8, bottles. 8,000. Right. Yeah. And it's not available at the moment in Poland, right? At the moment, no. Hopefully after this uh, meeting. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> okay, Victoria. And, okay. Uh, uh, right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank nice you very much. You. Uh, mm -hmm. And stay with us if there's any comments coming in chat. Okay. Perfect. And now, ladies and gentlemen, two last wines, uh, Bodegas Olivaro and Ana Maria, Mar Ana Maria Martinez. So the same name. You have the same name as Ana Martia, Maria Martinez, right? Okay. Ana Maria. Bodegas Olivares. Ana, we very Hello. nice. Hello. Okay. I, I can see you. Hello. Hello, Ana. We can't see you. We can hear um. you. Okay, I can. I, I got the, the camera on and I can see everything is green and on. Hold Good. Uh, just turn the, ca the, the mobile as uh, this is the backside camera. Yeah. Right. Okay. We can see your. We can can see you see me now? No, it's the bottle and your hand. Wait. So this is a back camera. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. 
Wait. No worries. It's fine. Can you see me now? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello to everyone. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Go on. Have... It's fine. It's fine. We hear yes. you and we see you. Right? Okay. So good evening to everybody and thank you for attending uh, the seminar about wines from Fumilla. I guess by now, after all my colleagues, you might have a good idea of, of what Monastrell uh, is like in Fumilla and how versatile it can be. So I'm talking uh, today about uh, Bodegas Olivares and precisely um, Olivares Crianza 2017. So, just a, a few highlights about Olivares. Um, it's a family uh, own, run on vineyards, and we are placing the, one of the coolest soup zones of the Appalachian in Tobarra. And uh, the, the treasure of, uh, of the family are the, uh, the vineyards, the bush vine, mainly among the 275 hectares. We have 110 hectares of ungrafted monastrel, and this wine is uh, is a single variety of uh, of uh, monastrel. Um, the the altitude and the the microclimate that what we achieve by being over 800 between 800 and 900 meters over the sea level, as well as the the natural habitat that the, the vineyards are placed as they are surrounded all by the Mediterranean forest. So that gives you a, re, a real picture when you taste the wine and, and actually what, what really is, uh, is the style of the, of the family is that by tasting their wines you can really um, feel the, the terror. So they are wines that they really have a lot of typicity. So I already <laughs> pour some wine, and actually this is a wine, as I believe there are chefs, sommeliers, and so many wine connoisseurs with us this evening. This is a wine that uh, you actually want to decant and, and have uh, a pleasant meal in a restaurant. So the label, as you can see, is very eye-catching, and it tells you the idea behind is that you can just pick up the bottle and see uh, all the main information that describes the wine. It gives you the altitude, the name of the, the state where it is uh, planted, uh, as well as providing uh, the, the type of the vineyard, the grape, and so on. So let's go um, and taste the wine straight away. So uh, the wine is Crianza 2017. It was... Uh, a vintage with uh, actually um, represents a very hot uh, summer, a very hot uh, year in the area. So the wines were feeling very concentrated. And here you have, as you can see, the, the color is uh, a dark cherry color with some garnet hints. And on the nose, the wine is very intense. Um, you feel the, the toasted nose, very clean pencil case coming from the nose and then just bent, melting over a uh, very ripe and, and still fresh, fresh fruit. You find uh, notes as well as spiciness coming from the, from the aging as the wine has been spending one year on French oak uh, barrel. And, and then as you move into, into the complexity notes that you find on the nose, follow as well by the, the very ripe uh, fruit on the palate, You find that fruit coming through um, dry and at the same time uh, evolving all the palate. So you get a lot of intensity on the on the ripeness and the and the on the right fruit on the palate. The wine has already um, velvety tannins that you can just uh, feel all the way through. And although the wine, as you can see, it achieved 15 alcohol content. The, the acidity and the freshness that you, you find all the way through on the palate drives you uh, in a very pleasant way and having a, a very lovely finish. So this is a wine that uh, you, you might need to have in your in a wine list. If you like to add value to your wine list, 
um, if you are um, classifying your wine list with different style of wine, let's say you have uh, full and intense and rich uh, wines uh, or grape varieties that your customers already like, such as Zinfandel, coming from the USA, or Primitivos from the south of Italy, or Mataros and Mouvedres uh, from south of France, Chateau Neuf de Pape. So this is an, uh, an alternative that you can always offer to your customers and it will fit really nicely in, in a wine list. As well, when put it together with food, you have a great range of pieces that you can have. Um, as you can see, the wine fields uh, is a full and intense red wine that you can think straight away in something big, in a big beef, red meat, uh, something uh, that it has been grilled and very versatile as well with the with the type of sauce that you can put on it, but always thinking on that very ripe and velvety fruit that you find on the wine, that it will, it will drive you to put something with a melon taste, but a pumpkin or mushrooms. So all I know is, uh, as I said, it's a wine that uh, that brings harmony harmony to your to your cuisine in a restaurant, and it's a wine that uh, you will offer a, a very versatile and, and add value to, to the wine list. The, the wine, is, uh, we produce approximately 25,000 bottles of Crianza. And, uh, How much, the, sorry? How many? 25,000 bottles of Crianza. 25. Uh, right. Yes. 22,500, yeah. Sorry, I don't know if uh, maybe I, the sound is not, is not good for you. No, I'm, I'm I'm deaf. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Uh, and, and the price? And the retail price here in Spain is around fifteen euros. Fifteen. Fifteen, right. one five. Yeah, one, one five. five. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's available in Poland, right? It is available in Poland. Sorry, I ca I cannot see the the slides that you passed through, but. Uh, um, you have uh, you have uh, the last the last page of the presentation. You have the name of the importer, the current importer, which is placed in the northern part of Poland in Sopot. In Sopot, so this is Wine Express, perhaps. Festo, yeah, I think, ah, I think all right. Festo, yeah. yeah, good, mm -hmm. fine, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, um, well, guys, what do you think about this wine? It's a lot of people, but very silent. Right. Thank you very much, Anna. No problem. That's a pleasure. And uh, I hope you, you enjoy the, the session and I lead you to Fran, who is uh, waiting then to follow. Yeah, yeah this is the last one. And, uh, and Fran actually, yes, is uh, waiting for the boys. We like it. Well, that's laconic, but uh, I like this, this comment. And I hope Anna likes it as well. Perfect wine, very concentrated and elegant. Right. Okay, Fran and Bodega no, Arsenia. No podio ver lo que no podio ver la presentación. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Fran. Yeah, we can't see you. We can't see you. Yes, we can. Yeah, hear you. I'm going to try because you can hear me, but you can't see me. Yeah. Yes, we can't see you, we can hear you. <laughs> I think so, that is here now. Ah, works, works. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a beautiful Hello. Spanish. Hello, here. everyone. Oh, but yes. Uh... Us always. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, please. Uh, okay, thank you for, for the excellent seminar, Piot, and excellent presentation of Carolina and the, the excellent world of Esther also. Okay, I would like to, to give you a small presentation of a winery, okay? Uh, Bodega Salceño is one of the oldest wineries from Jumilla. Uh, we started in 1870. Uh, it's one of the first wineries they started to, to, to work and to bottle in wine with their own Jumilla. Okay, I'm the sport manager from eight months ago only. I was working in the different winery in Jumilla from 20 years ago. I'm oldest. And I would like to, to talk about our winery, okay? So we have different brands. Arsenio is, is our principal brand from D.O. Jumilla. Uh, we don't have all vineyards, but we control it around 500, 550 different extra and different variety. Uh, 
like my colleagues, we, we have a excellent controls for the plots and we have excellent vineyard from the monastery grapes around 50, including 60 years old. But we are using it now in, in our wines, uh, not only monastery, we blend the wine with Syrah and we are using in, in all wines Garnacha Tintorera also. Okay, for example, in, in our case, we don't use Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, we don't use like uh, some friends uh, Petit Verdot. Uh, Juan Miguel is our winemaker from 25 years ago, and he's an excellent winemaker, and he can control it all plots with different viticultures and different plots. Uh, as we told you about that, we have different vineyards from around 400 uh, meters sea level up and 900 meters. So we can control them. We have different vineyards and we have different uh, time to, to, to have the harvest. We started around the first and second week of August and we finished around first and second week of November We because we have a sweet wine also with pacification grapes and, and it's a very long uh, vineyard uh, harvest. Okay, Here we can say some of the winery. The, this is the oldest winery. We are in the middle of Cumilla. Is the only one area, so we are using here the more technical tradition of fermentation, but we are using steel tank and cement tanks also. We are using normally with uh, French and American oak and different capacity 225 and 500, 300 and 500 liters also. And we are using new barrels for different wines. In this case, for a senior selection, that is the wine, is the wine that we are testing today. Is uh, we are using in first years and second years the new barrels, French and American oak. And I think that is a small and good presentation about the winery, and we can start to taste the wine. Today we are testing the senior selection. Here is 2016, but since the 2017, I think so that we have everybody this vintage. And this is an excellent blend because Juan Miguel, the winemaker, they want to select the first, the first and better uh, different grades that we are using in the other wines. In the ranch of Alceño wines, we have a mono varietal of Monastery, mono varietal of Syrah, different blend with Monastery and Syrah. But in this case, we, we, we have a blend of Monastery 65%, uh, Syrah 15%, uh, and Tempranillo and Garnacha Tintorera also. So this wine, uh, we're making dif different uh, elaboration every year. And it's, it's a, a select the best grapes and different plots, okay? And it's, it's a wine with a excellent extraction of color because we are using the Tintorera, Garnacha Tintorera is high color. And you can taste the wine. I can taste now, okay. But I can, I can taste. I tasted the wine. It's every day. So and now after the different fair in Spain and in, in Pro Wayne, we tasting many times the wines, okay. And the, mas the maceration and alcoholic fermentation. When it's finished, we select the best wine and we transfer in different American and French barrel. And the malolactic is uh, always in, in French barrel and American barrel also, okay. And we put in the barrels around 18 months, one eight months. And after this, we put in the barrel around 15 months. So we are testing now 2017 vintage. Uh, we can produce, this is a limited edition, it's about uh, 9,000 border. I think so that in this case, we can see here in the limited edition, this vintage is uh, 9,381 border uh, in this vintage. And the retail price is about uh, 15, 17 euros here in Spain. And I think that is all. <laughs> Hi, Pietro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I don't know if somebody have any question. <laughs> 
Great wine, congrats, uh, fantastic blend, love this one. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is definitely 2017, the, the, yeah. the vintage we have, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. And the blend is the same as in, because the note is- Yeah, it's uh, the same. We always the same, but you know that not always the same exactly percentage the blend because we depend on the climate. So for example, this year we have a lot of rain. I don't know exactly the claim, but always is uh, the more percentage is Monastel around six, 60, 65, 70% of Monastel and the rest of the three varieties. Right. Okay. And tell me, your importer in Poland? Is... Yeah, we are working in, in Poland with Paulina. And Pe Pavlina, right? Yeah. And Pavlina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Fran. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Any comments, guys? Thanks, Thanks to you. Somebody's writing something. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, two people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this is a new discovery. <laughs> well, yeah. Great. Happy. Um, I think the, 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 the region was uh, 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 something. Uh, ah, Carolina, hello. Do you want to say a goodbye word? Carol no. Esther, perhaps? Carolina. Uh, just I thank you. Thank you, everyone. Just now, start go, please. I was going to say, thank I think you. you are connecting. And uh, that's it. I hope uh, you had a nice vision of Humilla. Uh, here we are waiting for you with um, over almost 30 degrees. Uh, I know you've been having a bit cold these days. <laughs> so you yeah. always have a place to come uh, when you want uh, the good weather. <laughs> Not the good weather, <laughs> the hot weather. <laughs> we come. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Carolina. And thank you, guys. I hope you like the show and the presentation and wines, first of all. So, yes, see you I'm soon. Gonna, I'm going to and... give um, my email as a generic email, humilla.org. So, there uh, you can contact me to ask about any of the wineries that attended or, um, I don't know, any of any questions you may, you may have. We can, um, we can direct them from, from the email I was, I was just said. Mm -hmm. Okay, wine number 10. Well, there is a, the, there is a, someone, wine number 10 was the best. So, oh, Juan wow. uh -huh. It was a pleasure. Ah, Very it was fun. Fun. So, fun. Oh, fun. Number uh, the 10. pleasure was all. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's one hill. Sorry. Hmm. We also have a, a channel uh, for Engl English in Humilla Wines, in Instagram and in Facebook, if you want to follow us. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, well, hope to see you in Poland or in Spain. Anyway, wines from Humilia, guys, do not forget. But also the last one was very interesting and can fell some herbal notes. Yeah. Hmm. Basil, baby. Yeah, it's the, the balsamic, something very typical or typ typological from Monastrel wines. And uh, always, um, if you have uh, a soft tannin and this balsamic, you are probably very near or you are over Monastrel. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. And, uh, well, the next, the next tasting is also Spanish. So we see. Yeah. Guys, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Everyone, bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>